All right, here we are at verse 4 of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. We have so far been introduced to the Logos. We've learned that the Logos is face to face with God in verse 1. We've learned also that all things, without exception, not even one, was created through the instrumentality of the Logos. And now we come to a new idea which John brings to our attention here in verse 4. We have the relative pronoun ho, gegonen, that which came to be, in auto, in him, referring back to the logos, zoe, zoe is a word from which we get English words like zoo or zoology, it means life, zoe, ain, we've seen this one before, it's the third person singular of the verb of being, a me, translated was. So, that which came to be, gegonen, the aorist of genomai, to become, translated sometimes it came to pass or it happened, that idea, that which came into being in the Logos, and it could also be through, that word in, is a fairly broad word can, that can include within it the notion of instrumentality that we saw earlier, that which came to being in auto, in the Logos, zoein, life it was. So we have the idea of life now somehow being present in the Logos, and now the bridge from that thought to this one, and, he zoe, the life, ain, was, to, phos, the light. Of course, you know the word phos. We have English words like photography, etc., which are rooted in that. So life leads to light. That which came to be in him, life it was, and the life was the light, tone anthropon. The use of the definite article here of the men, anthropon, suggests that John has in mind distinctively something that belongs to the human race. I might mention, by the way, that the word anthropos, the genitive plural we have here, is the English idea of being man as in humanity. And so it is inclusive of women as well. There's a different Greek word, on air, which has to do with man as male. This is more man as human. And so, of course, at this point, we have a very broad statement that still seems to be restricted to the human race as opposed to any others. And what we're learning about it is that this life that is inherent or somehow intrinsic or came to be in the Logos is translated into light with respect to men. There's been a lot of conversation and debate down through the years on this verse as to exactly what is intended by the word light of men. It doesn't seem on the face of it that John is restricting this to redeemed men, to regenerate men, anything like that. He seems to have in mind something that would be connected to man as man, all humanity, but that there's something within us that is somehow uniquely our possession as human beings that is related back to the life that is in the Logos. Some people think this may be an allusion to being in the image of God. John Calvin thinks it's the ability to have some understanding of God, which obviously even people who are unregenerate, who are unbelievers, nevertheless have an intuitive sense, some idea in their heads of God. St. Anselm famously worked out the ontological argument which proceeds on the premise that everybody has some distinct idea of God within them, and maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe it's the capacity in human beings to think about God or to reflect on our distinct status in the universe. Unknown for sure, it remains a debated point. I'm not going to sally forth into a discussion beyond simply mentioning that it shows up now in this verse. And that's uh, verse 4 of Gospel of John, chapter 1.